good times. So glad I'm filming at 6 in the morning. Good lord. <sighs> Welcome back to my channel. We're here for another one of my most favorite, least favorite shades in the palette videos. And this time we're looking at my Huda Beauty palette collection. There are quite a few. I got sucked right into all of the mini obsession palettes. I really do like them. So I have quite a few of those. And I also have three of her full sized palettes. So we're going to start with the minis, work our way through those, and then move on to the full size. I have swatched them all. I've written down what my favorites are, what my least favorites are. I'm going to try to get through this relatively quickly simply because there are so many shades here or so many palettes to talk about. So we're just going to dive straight into it. All right, so the first palette that we're going to talk about is the Warm Brown Obsessions palette. And as you can see, it is very warm based, although there's really not all that much in terms of brown going on in here. A lot of these are far more reddish, almost orangish, uh, but be that as it may, here we are. So my, my most favorite in this palette is this one up here. And then my least favorite should come as no surprise because I rail on the cream shades in pretty much every palette. Uh, but those are the two here. Swatched out on the hand, you can see them there. So the thing with this shade and why it becomes my favorite out of the ones that are in here is just the color of it. I love that it's this truly rich, warm, orangey brown. I like that you can go in with a very light hand, shear it out, and it can be used as a transition shade, but if you use it as full opacity, it can help to deepen things up. I just think it's a very pretty color overall. The cream tone, I just, just never use the cream tones. That's just a personal thing. I think this would have been nice to use as more like a champagne kind of shimmer shadow. The only shimmer in this palette is the one in the middle. And I think having this with a more of a um, metallic finish would have just added to the diversity of this palette and I would have got much more use out of it. Um, so those are my reasons for making it my least favorite. Next up is the Mauve Obsessions palette, and I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like inside. So this is one where there is much more of an even distribution of mattes versus shimmers. Maybe not even, but at least there's more than one. At any rate, this one over here is my favorite. And then, oh look, it's a cream shade. Least favorite. There we have them. And then again, I'll just swatch them for you. And so my reasoning on the cream shades remains the same, but I just really think that this one is just so pretty. And it's like this almost dusty kind of pink. And I just think it's really different from a lot of what I have in my collection. And I just think it's so pretty. So ergo, it is my favorite. Can I get extra points for the use of ergo in a YouTube video, please? So the last of the original mini obsessions palettes that I have is the smoky one. And it's just such a really pretty neutral palette with the addition of that silver. Uh, my favorite shade in here is this one right in the middle. And my least favorite is this matte deep brown over here. So I just really like that metallic brown because I really don't have a lot of metallic brown shades in my collection. And I think it just adds something nice putting it all over the lid. It's just different than what you'd usually expect and yet it can still play into that whole smoky sort of vibe. My thing with the matte brown is not that it doesn't blend nicely because it does. It's just, I, it's so close to the one in the middle that I think it could have had even more depth to it. Somewhere really between the black and this brown, if this had been a little bit deeper, because when you do apply it and blend it out a little bit, it's really not as deep as it looks like it's going to be in the pan. And I think just having it a bit darker would have just added to this palette just that much more. Again, not a bad shade, just out of the nine that are in this palette, it's my least favorite. 
So then we move on to the Jewel Tone inspired palettes that she has and the first one up is the Emerald Obsessions and it is a very pretty green palette. I like that there's a lot of diversity in the green. It's not all sort of one note. You have the murkier greens, brighter, there's metallics, there's mattes. It's got a good mix going on in here. My favorite is up here in this corner and then my least favorite is what looking in the pan should be one of my most favorites and it's this one right over here. There they are obviously on my fingers. So the most favorite is just stunning. I just think it's so beautiful. And the least favorite is just such a disappointing shade. Like look at how deep and rich it is in the pan and then that's the kind of payoff that you get from it. So like no matter how much I rub and like I'm pressing fairly hard and I'm you can see how many times I'm going around in the pan. It's still just, here I'll do it as a separate swatch. It still just doesn't really pack much of a punch. Like it's like chalky basically on the hand. And like there's, there's not much more product that I could pick up with short of actually pulverizing it and turning it into like a loose pigment. It just does not have the impact that you would expect that it would looking at it in the pan. So it's a very disappointing shade. It could have been so pretty, but the pigmentation just isn't there. For that reason, it's my least favorite. My most favorite is just, it's glittery without being glittery, if that makes sense. Like it's got a truly metallic foiled finish. It looks very sparkly. It's very reflective, but there's really no glitter at all in there and it is a very smooth texture. I just think it's so beautiful. So you win some, you lose some, apparently. Up next is the Amethyst Obsessions palette. As one would expect, it is very purple based. And again, it's just one of those palettes that I think is very pretty. Also because I have sort of green hazel eyes, this one plays up my eyes nicely and is very flattering on my eye color. My favorite shade in here is this true purple satiny metallic whatever shade over here. And then my least favorite is this matte shade on the other side. So there they are. All right, so I just, I love the color of it. I love that it's like a true purple. I think it's just beautiful. I love the finish of it. This one here is just very disappointing. It is patchy. It, again, just doesn't pack the, like, pack the impact that you would expect it would. It's so deep and dark in the pan, but then applied, it's not. You can build it up and it is workable, but it's just, it's a disappointing shade overall, and therefore, it's my least favorite. Now we're gonna talk about the Ruby Obsessions palette. There we have it. I actually really like the diversity in this. Like I like that it's not just all one note. You have like a really pale pink. You've got a deeper shade over here. Like I really, I like the color selection in here with the exception of one, uh, which we will get to momentarily. So my favorite is this one up here at the top. And then my least favorite is down here in the corner, which is kind of ironic because this it really is the only like true red shade in here. I guess arguably this one is, but this is what I think more of when I think of Ruby and it's my least favorite in this palette. Um, but I'm going to swatch them out here. So there is my most favorite. Again, it just comes down to the color option. I just think it's so beautiful. And this one, again, it's not a bad shade. It performs nicely. It's got good big pigmentation. I have no complaints in that regard. It's just, it doesn't really go with the rest of this palette. I think because the rest of it sort of leans more pinky purpley, to be honest, um, despite being called Ruby, that the actual true red just looks a little out of place and I find it harder to work with. Um, but using other shades from other palettes and using that shade as sort of like the spotlight shade, 
that one that works for me um, so I do like the shade and I do like that particular shadow just in the context of the other ones it just ranks lower than the rest of them for me that's all moving on to the sapphire obsessions this was a palette I was very excited to get my hands on when it first released because it's just so pretty and at the time that this one was released there really wasn't much in the way of blue palettes out and about I'm pretty sure I could be wrong you can correct me down below but I'm pretty sure this one came out after that whole Tarte Icy Betch April Fools nonsense um, where really they just kind of punked themselves I'm pretty sure that Huda Beauty kind of was like I'll pick up that ball and run with it and here it is again I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure that's how that went down all right so my favorite is up here my least favorite unfortunately is the shade that I thought would be one of my favorites okay sorry you can't see what I'm doing so favorite is up here least favorite is that like limey green chartreuse kind of color down there here we go I just I love the vibrancy of that blue I love that it's got a nice metallic finish I just think it's so pretty um, need I say anything about this can we see just how disappointing that is and how dusty and chalky it is and again same with the emerald one like I can like go to town on that shadow and really load up my finger and it's still like I'll put it on top of what I've already swatched just so it's even more and it's still just not there like it just doesn't show up to play you can work with it I have done looks with it in the past but you really got to work with it and you really got to pack it on there and it just it could have been so much more the blue saves it and the rest of the shades are really pretty but if you're going to include an outlier shade like this which I think is a good choice to be honest I think it really does add versatility to this palette it makes the palette as a whole easier to work with but if you're going to put in a shade like that you got to make sure that it's pigmented and this one is not so the last of these jewel toned palettes that I have is the Topaz Obsessions palette and it is a very pretty warm palette my favorite shade in here is uh, this one up here and my least favorite is the bottom middle shade this one over here there we have them I will never not love a mustardy kind of yellow like I would just never not love it I just I love those shades this one has a little bit more of an orange base to it than yellow and I just think that it's spot-on so pretty this one down here I have no complaints really about the performance of it I really don't even mind all that much about the actual color choice the only thing for me is that I do wish that it was a little bit more divergent than this shade up here just to give some context I'll swatch that one beside it so there's that other shade and this is the one that I'm saying is my least favorite um, the reason why I rank this one higher than this is just it's got more of that orangey base which I think plays nicely with the other shades all these bronzy tones that are in here this one I just could have tweaked it a little bit either make it more brown or even infuse a little bit more red into it just differentiate it a little bit more from here and I think that it just would have added that much more to this palette I have two more mini palettes to talk about so one is the nude light palette and it is very nude and very light and I had a hard time choosing a favorite shade here so I do kind of have two that I would rank above the rest one is the metallic purple and the other is this sort of duochromatic pinky shade over here I will show them to you in a second and then can you guess which one is my least favorite <sighs> that would be the cream shade in the middle uh, so here we have them so I'm not going to talk about the cream shade I've talked ad nauseum about them but these two favorite shades they're just so pretty I love like how fun and feminine and like 
just how so delicate and pretty that lilac shade is. And then this one I just love, like the peachy, goldish sort of duochromatic thing that's going on there. It's a shade that works nicely in the inner corner or can be used all over the lid as well. And it's just so pretty. Overall, I just really like the femininity of this palette. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's girly and it's pretty and I love it. I like that they did not put in a super dark shade in here. It drives me absolutely batty when brands are like, here, we're going to give you all these nice little pastels and a black. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that black shade? So I think this works really nicely with the rest of them. Um, had it not been the brown shade, even more of like a purpley kind of shade could have worked. But overall, I have no complaints about that one. I think it works perfectly. Um, but this is a palette that I think is really pretty. And I do like that they came out with like the medium and the dark options as well. I didn't pick them up, but for my skin tone, this one does work. And I think I could work like the other two as well, just because something's designed for deeper skin doesn't mean that it's not going to translate well on light skin. It just goes into the application and how intense the look is going to be. But with my skin, this one works really pretty. And I think it's just so nice for spring and summertime. So last up for the minis is this one here. It's part of the neon range for the life of me. I can't remember if this is the neon orange or the neon pink. And I can't tell based on this because it's like a pinky orange. Uh, I think it's the neon orange, um, but the shades inside also add to my confusion because there's pinks and there's oranges in here uh, and yellows. So who the hell knows at any rate, there it is. You can see it. It is quite fun. I am wearing this shade here as like the transition shade over here. I have shades from the Ruby palette as well as the Rose Gold Remastered. That's what I've got going on on my eyes. Uh, but let's talk about this one. So my favorite shade in here is the Shimmery Orange at the top. And my least favorite is this like matte sort of orange tangerine whatever the hell color that is in the middle I don't know how to describe that all right so the shimmery orange is just so pretty and so different like I just I don't think I have anything else like that again it's one of those shades that looks glittery but I can't detect any glitter in it if that makes sense uh, and it's a very smooth smooth feeling uh, shadow so it's not like a pressed glitter. So yay. Um, this shade in the middle, this like light peachy tangent, oh, I got to stop trying to describe it. Uh, this thing right here, it could be a really pretty shade if it applied the way that it looks like it's going to apply. And that's the problem with some of these palettes. Overall, I love these mini palettes, but when they drop the ball, they drop the ball. And so I'm hoping that the camera will pick it up if it'll ever focus. There we go. I, I'm looking in the viewfinder and I can't tell because I've got the ring lights blinding me. Um, it just, it's very bunchy. Like it is not a smooth shadow at all. If you can see, like it's even to blend, like it just sort of moves along the skin. It doesn't really blend out properly. It just, it's not pigmented. It's just a really finicky, fussy, actual formula to work with. The rest of the mattes in here, not like that. So I don't know what happened with this one in particular, where it just kind of sits on the top and just, it's really difficult to blend it out. And then once you do get it blended out, it kind of blends into nothing. So it's just a very disappointing shade. The color is very pretty, but it just is a pain in the butt to work with. So that brings us then to the full sized palettes. So the first one that we'll talk about is the Rose Gold Remastered. If you haven't seen the inside of this palette, here we have it. Overall, I think it is a very pretty palette. I don't tend to reach for it a lot, but when I do, I like the looks that I create with it. So I don't know why I don't use it more often. Well, I know why I don't use it more often. It's because I have 6 million palettes, but 
it is overall a pretty palette. There is an absolute standout shade though, uh, and there is an absolute dud of a shade as well. So picking the favorite and the least favorite in this palette was actually pretty easy for me. My most favorite is this one here called Pink Diamond, and my least favorite is this one down here called Black Truffle. Here we are. Pink Diamond I have on like the inner portion of my lid today. It's, oh my God, it's gorgeous. If they sold that as like a single, I would snatch it up in an instant. It is so incredibly beautiful. It is so smooth yet glittery and reflective and metallic, but not glittery again. I've said that before. It's just such a stellar shade. It's so beautiful. Um, this black, if you can't, if you can't formulate a good matte black, don't put it in the palette. Like that, that black is atrocious. <laughs> it truly, truly is. It is so patchy. They should have just gone for like a deep gray. I think that would have made more sense uh, because this is not good. It's not a good shade. Um, if you compare that to, oh, let's see. I'm pretty sure just grabbing Sultry here, Noir from ABH. Like that is what a matte black should look like. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's a terrible shade. Uh, so picking that as my least favorite was very easy. In the Smoky Obsessions palette, there is a black and it's very good. It's pretty much right up there with the ABH, although a little bit more gray than the ABH, but like, Huda, what the hell is this? When you can do this, why do you have this? That makes no sense. Anyways, I'll move on from there. Uh, but that shade, Pink Diamond, Huda, you need to release that as a single because it's effing gorgeous. And also, if you could release a few singles with that exact same formula, just in different colors, I would buy that up in a heartbeat. That should be a mini palette right there. There should be nine of just those shadows. Oh my God, do it in like a pink, a green, a blue, like do nine colors, just that formula. Oh, I would buy it in a heartbeat. All right, so let's talk about the new nudes palette. Here it is. You can see it's very much like you can see where the nude mini palette got its inspiration. Um, but I do like the overall color story here. I like that it is more pinky. There's some purple shades in there. I just think it's overall a very pretty palette. Um, not wild on the pressed glitters. Thankfully, there's only two not wild on them. But amazingly enough, they're not my least favorite shades. Uh, and also amazingly, the cream is not my least favorite, and a matte is my favorite, which is pretty surprising for me because it's usually a shimmer shadow. Uh, okay. All right, all right, come on, you can do it. Okay, so, sorry. Okay, so my most favorite is this really light mauve shade over here. My least favorite is this like weird concealer thing that they've got going on here. Um, it is... I guess it's meant to be like an eyeshadow base because it is like a creamy texture. It's not a pressed powder. It feels very much like a concealer. Um, and appropriately enough, it's called concealed. It's stupid. I, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a very strong feeling, but there it is. Okay, so that purple is just so beautiful. It's so different and it's so beautiful and I just love that it's this nice like balance of pink and purple. I think it's gorgeous. This is a pain in the ass. Uh, so first of all, it's messy as hell. So it gets like, it's all outside of here. If I, come on, focus. If I use these like pressed glitters, like inevitably something is gonna end up getting mushed up in here. You can see there is like a divot in the pan and that's because I really have to press down because this palette is two years old, a year and a half, I, I don't know, time has lost all meaning. I have no idea how old this thing is, but it's not brand new. 
Um, so that like creamy feel is starting to dry out. There's no cover on it. Like it's just also, I don't need that in a palette. If I want to use an eye base, I will just use an eye base. I don't need a shade in here to do that for me. You could have just put an extra eyeshadow in there. Um, so I get that they're trying to be like different and add something extra and bonus value or whatever, but it didn't work and I don't like it. Um, but I like the rest of the shades minus the cream and the pressed glitters. <laughs> okay. So the last one then is her newest one and that would be the Mercury Retrograde. Um, but before we get into that, like, stop putting your eyeballs on your palette. We know who you are. We know who you are. We know that it's eyeshadow. We don't need to see it on the palette. It's a grape. I'll move on. Okay. So Mercury Retrograde, there are the shades in there. It's a nice, like, selection of shades to work with. There's some good variety in there. Um, my favorite shade, okay, so I had a hard time narrowing it down to just one, so I got two favorite shades, and then my least favorite shade, it looks like I have two least favorite shades as well, um, we'll just talk about one, because the other one is the cream shade, <laughs> and I don't need to be so redundant. Okay, so two favorites are the two blues in here, so this one is Nebula, this one is Mercury, and then this one over here is called Frazzled. What the hell? Oh, it's nail polish. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm like, what is pink all over my nail? Yeah, that would be nail polish. You adult. Um, full disclosure, it's like 6 in the morning. I've been up since 2.30 uh, because my stomach was just not happy with me for some reason. Couldn't get back to sleep, so I thought, okay, well, at least I'll be productive and film something. But my brain's a little bit mushy, just a touch mushy, so please forgive me that I'm an idiot. Okay, here we are. They're like, they're, oh my god, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. This shade Nebula is, okay, I've said this a million times in this video, like it's glittery without being a pressed glitter. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's gorgeous. Mercury, again, this beautiful foiled blue shadow. I just love it. And then this shade, Frazzled, again, it's one of those situations where it's not a bad shade. I just think they could have gone a different way with it and just, it's a useless shade to me. It just doesn't really add anything to this particular color story. It just seems a little bit redundant and it's nothing special. So I don't hate it and there's no performance issues with it. It's just not a shade that I look at and get like excited about. There's that. Okay, um, in previous videos in this sort of series, I have ranked the palettes, but there are just, there are way too many um, that I just, I don't want to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't even want to pick a favorite and least favorite because they're all so very different that it's really difficult to say this is my favorite because it depends on how I'm feeling that day. If I'm really feeling like I want something blue, then obviously the blue palette is going to be more along the lines of my favorite. Um, there are really no dud palettes that I have here, uh, and there's none that just immediately screams like, I'm better than the rest, so I'm not going to rank them. I feel like this video is probably long enough without me ranking the palettes and sitting here and hemming and hawing for another hour trying to figure it out. So. Uh, with all that said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next video. If you enjoyed this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, I would love it if you would consider joining our little fam here. We are a lovely bunch. And uh, until my next video, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.